Hey guys, finished episode number four of Build Tune Race Live on Facebook. If you haven't checked it out, please do so. And also, don't forget to subscribe below. I was live with the guys from Streetcar. They have some awesome photography, some really cool clothing, and just branding material. So make sure you check them out, support their photos, and everything else. But here's a little insight into their business and what they're doing. Sorry for the poor quality on the uh, video. I was trying some new things out, trying to get that better so I can bring you guys some better content. For you that does know, Streetcar is, I guess you guys can explain what you are and what you do, but uh, automotive photography and branding, and but you guys can talk about it. Sounds good. What's up, everybody? I'm Cameron, and this is also Cameron. Um, <laughs> we're good buddies. Uh, I moved out here, and he was one of the first guys I met that was into cars, and we kind of just linked up. So I do uh, uh, brand strategy for a living, and he's a passionate automotive photographer. So we uh, we linked up, and we've been going around uh, chasing races just like everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. We've been in the scene, not not real long as a team, but it's definitely something that's uh, is taken off. Yeah, we're having fun. Yeah, how long have you guys been doing it? Uh, I think we just clipped a year last month, I believe. And it just like anything else, it started off as a hobby, and then we we're trying to figure out how to monetize it. Sure. So we could start going to farther away races and you know covering expenses and hotels and gas, and slowly but surely. Uh, We've gotten there, you know. Right, and that's that's what's cool. And I guess I'm sure you guys are nowhere close to where you plan on being in another year. So <laughs> it's yeah. all it's all about growing it. What? Uh, so I mean, how did that kind of come about? Is just let's build a brand and let's create something that people can follow along with. I mean, because we're in that digital age. Or what was kind of the I guess the background to starting it all? Um. Well, I was uh, actually driving up to the ice cream cruise um, up in okay. Nebraska doing like a hundred miles an hour in the fast lane late at night. And uh, I've always been into branding and marketing. My dad's an old ad, ad agency guy and uh, I wanted to work for Nike out of college. So I've always been into that sort of stuff. Um, and it was, I, and when I hit, reached out to him, he was the first person that popped into my mind. And so when he said he was in, I was, we were like, let's, we got to do this. And I, I think we kind of figured it out on the go. Um, his photography has always been super good and I knew not enough people were seeing it. And so I kind of bring the merchandise branding and he does all the event coverage. I think it just works out really perfectly. Heck yeah, no, it's, it's worked out well. You guys have done something pretty, pretty cool. I mean, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, that's sweet. You know, the whole, and that you guys kind of fell into that right time at the street car and true street and kind of. Yeah. Still want, roof and quarter and what's really right. a street car. And so you guys have had a good, uh, good little run at that too. We kind of complement each other perfectly, I guess, because I, I had no knowledge of the business side of it. Um, and he had a lot of knowledge of the business side of it. Of course, I've learned a ton on this short little journey in from him. Um, so yeah, we just kind of complimented each other perfectly. And uh, yeah, it just really really worked out well. We had fun with the, the name Streetcar just because there's clearly a, a gap in what, you know, whether it's a race car on the street or a streetcar with the T. Um, so we kind of just, you know, I feel like good brands always have like, you know, unique names that you hear at once sure. and pick it up. And uh, we fought, not fought, but a lot of times people would ask us, you know, what, what is a streetcar? Yeah. And, uh, our little definition is just kind of the gray area in between a, you know, tagged and insured street car and a purpose built race car. So when the lines start getting blurred with parachutes and certified roll cages, but you're still driving it on the street, that's kind of what a, a street car is. Yeah. yeah, sure. Absolutely. And I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to be in that niche, but it kind of gives you your, your niche though at the same time. Yeah. And it's just a fun play on words and it stands out and it's bold and graphic and yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's kind of the cool part. It makes them, it's clean, I guess the, the logo is just clean and it's simple, but it's, it stands out for sure. Um, something I noticed is your guys' stickers on that you sent out. Uh, I got a couple of them that are, they're different from every other sticker that would go on a car. So they stand out off the car and you notice that for sure. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Cool. Oh, thanks man. A lot of people, they can't always 
hollering at us to make like a plain white sticker or a black and white sticker. And that was something that we really had set in stone from the beginning for at least for a long time. We were strictly doing like the red box because it pops out instantly. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So what uh, you guys did a lot of a lot of events last year. What was kind of your your favorites or what stood out as far as what you guys got picture wise? Yeah, for photos, I think Outlaw Armageddon was probably the the best. My that was my favorite event as a, from a photographer standpoint. I think. I mean, not and it's, that's kind of almost cliche to say because yeah, it's a giant event, but um, I was just extremely pleased with my quality of photos and the quality of cars and just the event as a whole. It's a pretty epic weekend. Yeah. And it got rained out, but we did a we did our first annual uh, what do you call it? <laughs> yeah, the, we invited a bunch of people and went go kart racing. Yeah, because it got rained out like pretty much all day Saturday, I think it was. So yeah, yeah, I we, loaded up and headed out after that deal. Yeah, <laughs> we had to get uh, back, so I was like, well, oh well, and it was raining, raining, raining. So yeah, yeah, making um, the best out of every situation, though that's cool. Definitely, and then one of my favorites. Uh, I really liked the uh, Mustang F body, and I also liked uh, the local Operation uh, Outlaw. Outlaw, yeah, that's a yeah, chance. Operation Octane at the Speedway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That well, thing, that's super cool. So I don't know if you guys have seen or not. We had like a Colorado Street Outlaw deal, and at PPIR we ran a similar event, um, but the runway or the pit lane's much shorter. Uh -huh. uh, so it gets super sketchy going into the corner, and the cars got a little too fast, so we. Um, I know they have it there as much. that too, mandating parachutes or whatever. And I guess it was oh. it, some behind the scenes issues, but purely from a spectator point of view, I mean, we were bending there, but it's a, it's a cool event. Uh, it needs some work, but uh, yeah, I yeah. think it's a. It has like major potential to be huge potential. To I be think, a huge, huge no prep event. I think it could be a world class event. Sure. Um, they got the facility. That's for that's yeah. for sure. How's the seating work out out there? Is it? Uh... They brought in like a bunch of bleachers that they went kind of on the end of the turn and the straightaway there, and they had it roped off to where you. I mean, you could only go so far. So you were fairly far away from like the starting line, but definitely close enough. Yeah, I got you. And no, they all cool. had like the grandstand seating, which was just open seating too, and they had that kind of sectioned off. But I mean, yeah, you you could easily hold you know thousands, tens of thousands of people there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, and I thought it was pretty cool how they had let cars park like in the uh, the paddocks and stuff at the track. That's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, the thing with those events is when they're not at the track and they're not being ran like all the other ones is it seems like it's a little more relaxed. I guess it's just uh, there is there just to make passes. There's no issues with the clock or the timing or the red light or the yellow light or whatever the heck it is. So, but you got to put somebody out there running a flashlight, which gets a little dangerous depending on the event. So that's all part of it. <clears throat> um, so what do you guys, I guess, look for in an event? If somebody wanted you guys to come to their event to cover it, like, what do you guys want to see? What do you guys like? Um, right now, how, what, how we prefer is we'll come cover the event and uh, help with pushing the event in exchange for a booth space. And I as I, that's kind of at the stage where we're at right now, we can't do these events for free. Um, you know, we, I, we started at that point working our way up. And I think now we provide enough value where, um, you know, we put the work in or whatever. And so that's kind of at where we're at right now. And then who knows, we both love to do this, uh, at the next level. So we're just going to keep chugging away, you know? Sure. Absolutely. And then, uh, cause you guys really don't go live from the event or anything, right? No, I mean, he's busy like doing the actual, uh, photography and I, I keep up on social media there. It's a, uh, there's a lot of noise, not actual literal noise, but there's so many people going live. It's just another right. feed. And so we kind of try to bring a different angle. I'll walk around through the pits and do kind of like a a one on one uh, low production, but you know, walk around the car doing videos and stuff, and then just posting them separately rather than a put together produced piece. Um, yeah, what do you think? What yeah, you yeah. Think? I mean, yeah, we're just really trying to, especially with the the video side, especially at the beginning, and even now, we, we're not trying to step on anybody toes by any means um but we still 
obviously want to do video, photo, as much content as we can. Um, so it's kind of the photography being uh, the main focus for as long as we can. Uh, yeah, Kyle uh, Loftus does what he does super well, and he's sure. you know totally carved out that lane. Um, I, we're going to start doing video, but a different style of video. Um, well, you know what he does, it, it's, it's so dialed in that it would, I think it would be dumb for us to do and out of respect. So we're going sure. to, uh, I'm excited. Um, I have a, a camera, I uh, want and everything picked out. And so, yeah, just start bringing a, a, a different style of, uh, video content to these races and to the coverage of the event. Yeah. Heck yeah. So you guys, I mean, mostly like Armageddon streetcar reunion. So the, the door car events, right? Yeah. 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 Definitely more, you know, just kind of outlaw style door cars. I mean, whether, yeah, whether it be true street, small tire, big tire stuff, most, mostly kind of your, uh, more small tire. I think we both prefer small tire stuff just cause it's more relatable. Sure. Um, but yeah, big, I mean, big tire stuff is awesome too, all the way up to pro mod. I mean, we, we kind of love it all. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it's, that's what it's all about, but that's where it's kind of, I guess, and there's that, that lane to be in right now with kind of some of that stuff where you guys are at and, uh, with the pro mod, that's a bigger production deal and some of that, but it's always cool to go be a part of it if you can be. So definitely. Where are you guys located? Where do you actually live? Uh, we're about 45 minutes north of St. Jo- or, uh, I'm sorry, of Kansas City. Oh, okay. Uh, so if you know where US 36 is, uh, mm-hmm. the drag strip in Cameron or Osborne, we're about what 20 minutes yeah. west of there. Yeah. So you have you're not too. I guess anybody that lives, I've kind of learned through talking to other people with the small tire stuff is Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. It's kind of you can reach a lot of tracks kind of right up and down that little corridor. Yeah, or reaching sure. out in Colorado, it's a little bit harder to travel, I guess, to some of those places. But yeah, I mean, pretty much a six hour radius around us. There's there's tons of events. I, we did what ten weekends in a row, and we didn't go farther than four or five hours. Yeah, so yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's super cool. You get to reach a lot of a lot of different places. Where, what's your favorite tracks? What do you where do you guys like to go? For local or I, I, I know personally I really cool. enjoyed the uh, I twenty nine no preps that uh, yeah. Peter bomb through. Sure. We went through all three rounds of that, and for a for a you know hometown feel, those events are really cracking. So I had a good time there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's the I like the little tracks. I think that's kind of well, and with the type of racing, I guess that the little tracks feel more that outlaw feel to them. So Absolutely. it's kind of fun. Um, I, I was watching, you guys kind of had a year in review of some of the favorite pictures and stuff. Was the, was the picture you guys took with Birdman where he's all kicked back? Was that turned into one of the men's or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that one kind of blew up with, uh, I think he actually made the original like meme and posted it in, um, no prep life. Uh, and that group right, right. and it just, people just took it and ran with it. I think I I did a t-shirt contest or something. I put some merch together and did like a contest of whoever came up with the best meme of that photo. And uh, what's funny is months later, I just happened to be on Kai Kelly's page and someone shared it to his page. And it was a picture of Lizzie, his uh, girlfriend, oh, yeah. wrapped around his neck saying something about oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in Pat Musy Power. It was yeah. pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's good. And so that's what you guys are good at, I guess, is watching the, watching what's popular, watching what's, uh, what's happening right now. Cause you guys are running a, uh, a deal right now. And if you guys want to explain that, how long is that going for? The, uh, the red light deal? <laughs> I think I have it set up for a week. So, uh, you know, a lot of the people watching probably are familiar with the whole, uh, pro tree ish, instant green ish, uh, <laughs> Uh, no, uh, Christmas Wonder. tree deal yeah. um, that's going on right now in the style of racing and so um, after uh, Kai Kelly went on a crazy rant I just did a promo code red light and I don't know maybe 10 orders trickled in from that so that's pretty cool I just like to stay relevant on it, you yeah. know internet culture and so if there's a way to kind of you know weasel away like a promotion without feeling like too super addy or like super uh right bammy you know i think that's the difference in being over the top like buy this buy this buy this 
versus, you know, coming up with a creative way to do it. Jab, 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 right? Jab, 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 yeah. right hook. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool, guys. So that's what I, uh, I mean, so anybody that doesn't know, I've literally never talked to either one of these guys um, until maybe five, 10 minutes before we went live. I followed their stuff. Uh, we've sent a few messages back and forth. I've gotten some stickers, but uh, this is kind of the first time we've even been talking. So if you guys have anything for either of us, throw it in the uh, the comments. If you guys please do, I always throw it in there, a little right hook, please share. Share the post right next to where you're commenting. So uh, we get as many people in here to check this out as we can. Um, so what else, what, what's what's on the horizon for you guys? What, what are you planning? Um, I mean, you guys got what, banners, hats, shirts, hoodies. Yeah. So I pretty, I'm the one that does all the merch stuff and it's pretty much what I think is cool or what I would want is what I do sure. um, without really much rhyme or reason to it. Like I thought doing streetcar big lighters would be cool and it hasn't been done. And so I had 500 made, you know, <laughs> right, uh, right. Just stuff like that. I just think it's cool. Um, the black t-shirt has been done forever and everyone's doing it. And so, yeah. you know, just kind of doing something a little different. And so with yeah. a lot of our merch, um, we're doing it on a little, it's at a higher price point, but the quality is a little bit nicer. And so, you know, just kind of a different, more premium feel like we do embroidery on our sweatshirts instead of a uh, silk screen. Um, our hats are new era. Just kind of try, you know, try to do just a little different, stand out a little bit. Um, and so far, I think people are digging the stuff, you know? Right. No, you guys actually, I mean, it's such a clean, that's what I noticed. Like the embroidery is such a clean look too. It doesn't, it looks nice. It's kind yeah. of brings that next feel to it. So, that, and that's what's so hard, I guess, with the, I've like, I did a couple quick t-shirts just for like PRI and doing some of this stuff. And then I'm like, man, I just don't want to do a black shirt. Everyone has black shirts, but then you're like, you know, if I do anything else, people that actually work on cars, they're going to ruin them or whatever. So it, that's kind of a difficult deal. But I, I did a, a batch of red shirts and the black ones sell 10 to one. So like I tried, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I know nobody's going to buy a white one. Um, just cause yeah, like you said, getting dirty or whatever. And white shirts never look good after like the second time you wear them. Right. Um, and so, trust me, I, if there's a color that's different than black, <laughs> that's like yeah, black, I'd do it. We might do some charm ones, but. Kyle was saying the hats are dope. Thanks, yeah. Kyle. Yeah, Kyle's got a couple of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mean, so what else, guys? What do you want to What do you want to chat about? I mean, what else are you guys into as far as automotive goes? I mean, I know you got your brand, you kind of got your thing, but what's on? What do you guys do car related other than that? Or is that kind of your thing? That's what you want to do? Or you guys got projects that you work on or? I have a of... BMW. So I'm into German cars. There you uh, go. But my dad's a hot rodder or whatever. Um, yeah. You're trying I mean, to, we both want to start building something, but. Yeah. I'm waiting for the time to be right. Because if, if I start building now, it's going to suck cash out of the business. Right. Rather than getting the business to where I want and then where I can afford to start sucking cash out of it to build it. But I, possibly we've talked about building something together. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. I mean, tax right off if it was big enough right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be awesome. Yeah. You just got to brand it and call it a thing. But no, that's what I guess that's what everybody would love to do. But that's kind of where you got to you got to stick with it. But it's it's also a good time watching everybody follow your content. Right. That's there's there's a lot of fun in that, too. So. Yep. It's just a hobby that we should turn in, uh, or we have turned into a business and it's cool. We don't need it to do anything. And so we're in a good position. We can grow it slow and steady, you know, where nobody can take anything from us and just, we're, and we're having fun. I think that's to, you know, we travel all summer long and we're super good homies. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That, that's what's nice. And then I guess as you can spread out more and more and more, that's what, who wouldn't want to go on the road shooting and checking out all the coolest races and yeah. doing all that for sure. Heck yeah. Let's see if we got anything in the comments. You guys got anything for these guys? What do you, what do you guys want to know? What do you, you guys really haven't been out there, right? In a chat, chat type, type thing. So neither one of you guys really get on and do live feeds or have you, or. No, we've we've done like, anything. I've done like just like a handful at some races, just kind of walking around. Um, I think I only did like one of actual 
racing, just kind of like Cameron said earlier, there's, there's so many people that kind of already do it. We just wanted to bring something different. So I, I, yeah. I really want to try to uh, do like more around the pits and the, the teams and the people that are, uh, you know, with the cars, not just the cars. That's right. kind of my photography too. I, re- I really like looking at the people and the, what encompasses, you know, the, the, the whole, not just the cars. Sure. Oh, so, like, yeah, you have that kind of eye for not just the car going down the track, kind of what's going on just happening in general. I think it would be cool to start covering um, uh, some of the crew chief guys, you know, some of the guys that really are working on the cars. I think that would be those would be some good interviews. So that's something we might do. Danny wants to know if you guys are going to be at uh, LALSX versus the world, the uh, race he's going to be putting on here soon. We'll be there. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm planning actually uh, race week if I get the car done and I'm able to make that event or whatever. Race week ends, I think, that Friday and his events Friday, Saturday. So I thought about trying to drive further back into Kansas and going to check that out, hanging out with everyone too. So, um, tell Dan- I, what's that? I said, tell Danny I'll make him a zip up sweatshirt for a booth space at his race. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a fair deal. But no, that's what. So. I just kind of randomly have met a lot of cool people going to some of these events. Um, who's some of the, who's some of your favorite people that you see at the events car wise or driver wise or any of that stuff? Okay. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I can think of just well, and Of course we have a lot of, I mean, really close friends around the, I mean, Kansas city area mainly, but also we've sure. branched on since this, um, I don't know if I can think of like a specific. A lot of the people in the chat were super cool with. um, Yeah. Yeah. You know, not necessarily drivers. Some of them are drivers, but we met a lot of good people. The garage boat racing guys, um, the skinnies camp guy, guys and girl, Karen and Justin. um, Yeah. Darcy. Darcy. Yeah. Freaking Darcy. (laughs) I mean, Darcy. Is she from right there local to you guys? What was that? Darcy, they're local to you guys. Where's she out of? She's in Ish. buttfuck Egypt somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I made Darcy a custom uh, sweatshirt that matches her car. And she's talking about that in here, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. So if people get in good with you, you might make some. Uh, there's the comment right there. Maybe yeah. <laughs> That's one of the cool things about um, doing the embroidery. You know, when you're doing uh, screen printing, you got to do hundreds at a time, but. I can, and I do all the embroidery in house. So, you know, I can knock something out real quick in a custom color. Yeah, that's, that's sweet. So, I mean, that's kind of what's cool about still being small enough and to where totally. you still are close to everybody, I guess. It's not, you have the one size that fits all and everything. You kind of play with the, play with the brand and you always want to find the ambassadors to help grow the, grow the brand too. So that's sweet. See, <laughs> Darcy said literally nowhere. That's where she lives. <laughs> Marshall was <laughs> Marshall, wherever that is. That's, that's funny. funny. <laughs> so, what what's your uh, vision for Build Team Race? Since this is just an open dialogue, man. Yeah. So, I guess here uh, I started it beginning of November, and I was like, you know, I'm just I want to do something that's what I'm into. Uh, I do the racing. I built my car, I've tuned the car, I've raced my car, and uh, I don't see a lot of people from the fab side of it, from the tuning side, kind of doing everything was kind of my envision. So um, with the new car, I'm going to vlog it uh, and try to do some of the how-to stuff. I mean, I'm no expert in any of it, but it seems like when I was at the track or running my car or doing any of that stuff, I had a lot of people that come up, uh, how'd you do this? What'd you do there? What was this? Um, So I was like, well, you know what, if I'd actually start documenting what I'm doing, maybe some people might follow along and do whatever. So um, that's kind of part of it. Um, The live feed, I've I've liked meeting people. Uh, I have some contacts of people that I met when racing, and I like giving them their their spotlight. I like getting on and just chatting. And um, the way I look at it is I could go probably to anybody's shop, anybody's garage, anybody's race, any of that type of stuff and sit there and talk to them for hours. So I was like, yeah, let's try a live feed. And then everybody was like, who's next? Who's next? And then I was like, well, I want to reach out. 
So that's kind of where this is at. Um, so I'm extremely fresh into all of it, uh, two months in, and I don't know what the exact envision is for it, but it's uh, it's a brand. Uh, it's going to be something, uh, but I'm kind of just testing, tasting everything and seeing what, what I really kind of find in my niche in the market, right? I'm not, I can take photos and I think I've done decent, like with my photos at PRI, but I'm not exceptional beyond a lot of people that I've seen in the industry do it. So um, just covering it, trying to do what I can do and giving my view of the events I hit. And I hit some different events because of where I'm located in Colorado and uh, that type of stuff. So that's where I'm headed with that. So um, yeah, that's, yeah awesome. that's kind of my little thing. Super cool. There's a lot of interesting, cool people in this deal. And that's something I've been really uh, pretty stoked about is just meeting you know, different backgrounds, different, right. um, just, you know, what, how they're contributing to the whole scene. So you, you, you know, you, you're not going to have any shortage of cool people to talk to with this platform and this right. style of talk. Yeah. And that's what I kind of figure. And I mean, that's kind of where it's all headed, right. Is the, the live feed or the, and I'm not trying to build myself as me, like, uh, I just so happen to work that that's, I got to get on here and, but I get to meet you guys. Like, uh, for me to talk to you guys over anything else, I, I mean, I guess I could just say, hey, let's chat cars, but this is kind of a cool, cool way to do it. Definitely. I think, uh, you know, before uh, in our little pre-production meeting, before we went live, everybody, um, we were kind of talking entrepreneurialism in this space. And I think that would be a cool uh, podcast topic or whatever, you know there's a lot of us that are trying to do our own thing. Sure. I feel like we, we don't all talk, but there's enough for everybody to eat, you know? And oh, so I think, that, I think that would be a cool, uh, whether it's a segment on your show or it's something once a month where we, you know, we'll volunteer to come in or, you sure. know, Danny Davis has got a pop in Facebook page. There's a lot of cool people that are doing cool stuff, you know? Yeah. That's a, like Danny. I mean, I've met, it was a weird deal. I went out to Kansas and did a no prep race and he was there. He's like, yeah, there's a sand pit on the other side of the deal. And we we're just chatting. Um, <laughs> I wanted a shirt. Uh, and we stayed in touch since he was supposed to be out in Colorado at the end of this month. And I was going to do a, like an in-person live feed with him, but I might just have to do this with him now. So. And for a podcast. That's what, and I guess that's kind of the whole thing, right? And so I'm, I take, these i'm a little bit slower out i need to get a little quicker so i'm going to take this whole video take the uh voice out of it and i'll put it in like an anchor podcast which isn't very popular but it's an easy way to upload it and then it can go to google play music and all that so if people want to listen to it later they can as well yeah i kind of just barely dipped my toes into anchor after hearing about it on gary v actually and yeah that's i think yep. we, we would really like to try to get into to something like that we're just still we've been trying to put our finger on exactly what it's a cool app though. Right. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a different deal. And I guess that like, is that what you guys kind of look for is the, the next way to expand it? Yeah. Just kind of what, what we can bring to the table and how we can do it. And now that um, we kind of have our style, there's a, a quality control thing. So if we feel like we can bring it at the proper level that this idea needs to be at for it to work, then I think we're both we're both real open to stuff, you know. What do you, what do you think about like Instagram or Facebook or whatever? It depends. So my full time business, um, I'm a partner with my sister. Um, our Instagram is it's it's a large account, but it drives a lot of sales. I feel mm -hmm. like for the rate, and that's it sounds funny, but that's the fabric industry closing and selling supply fabric. Oh, really? um, for cars, I would say Facebook, the face the car race car ecosystem, uh, you know, digital ecosystem is much bigger right. on Facebook. Um, the virality of it, being able to share stuff. And, you know, I think that's that functions better for that, but don't get me wrong. I mean, when I post a promo code for like a sale or whatever, Instagram is right alongside of Facebook. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. And Why do you think so that? Easy. Oh, I'm sorry. It's so easy that, you, you know, with Instagram, you can just push it through to Facebook. So there's really no reason not to be on Instagram, I feel yeah. like. True. Yeah. I think our, our Instagram 
gets a lot more like likes and comments per how many followers we have versus our Facebook typically. But like, I mean, yeah, like he said, uh, the racing just ecosystem exists on Facebook much larger than any other platform. So it's, it's kind of, you definitely have to grow it there first and then expand, I, I think. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, is that, is the clothing kind of your big thing? Is that what you envision it or? No, that's just kind of just doing fun stuff, doing cool stuff, trying to do something different. Um, I think the, I envision it being much more of a media company rather than a t-shirt brand, if that makes sense. Sure. Right now, the, the merch sales fund our travel. You know, so it's a it's a necessary deal, um, and we're just yeah, like I said, we're just making cool stuff. But I definitely don't want to be like a t-shirt company or you know pulling up with a trailer full of t-shirts anywhere. Like, yeah, you don't want to be the thirteen twenties of that's not I mean, your vision. I have, I, mean, I, have really res- I have a ton of respect for him, and he runs a killer business. But I don't want employees and you know DOT tr- numbers on all my rigs, <laughs> and you know what I mean. I have an right. e-commerce background, and you can do a lot of damage on e-commerce. Sure. So do you guys kind of keep it, plan on keeping it just you two, or? I I, I think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, as long as possible. I, for right now, we don't really, we don't foresee it being any of anyone else. What really helps is um, streetcar is fully integrated into my other business. So as orders come in through the day they get packed just like our other company at the same time. So it's not like we have to get off work and then go pack, you know, 20 orders a night and answer emails. Everything is fully integrated. And so the second it comes in, it gets packed and shipped. You know, it, it's, I have a lot of, uh, uh, flexibility. Yeah. I'm pretty fortunate with how I have it set up and it's by design, sure. but it works. It, it, we can run it, uh, the whole business much leaner, I should say, you know, I right. Don't no, I mean, that's a huge thing. Thing. Yeah. Heck yeah. No, that's, that's the way to do it right there. If you have the ability to do it, there's no sense in it. That's awesome. I didn't, probably nobody really knows that about that. That's, that's super sweet. When it works hand in hand, it's kind of, that's super helpful. Definitely. And so right now we're in our, my studio is my office for, um, my full-time day, but yeah, it's, it's where the magic happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's what I was commenting on before we went live and everything. I was like, oh, you guys got a cool little setup back there. So what's your, I mean, what is, um, you did your t-shirts, you did all that. So are you guys designing everything? Are you guys uh, got some design background or what's your, I mean, of course, with Photoshop, you have some of that knowledge, but, or not, maybe not Photoshop, but Adobe products yeah. and all that. So what do you? Yeah, I do all of it myself, um, but I don't do any of the photography. So I'll, he does all the post processing, all you know, when he kills it on that. Thank you. But uh, yeah, and I've I've helped you, done some other things. I helped uh, Karen Price out with Skinny's Camp and the the sauce launch, and uh, I enjoy that side of it. Yeah, we really you're a numbers person. You love watching it grow or figuring out how to launch or promote yeah. or whatever. I really like uh, I really like branding. Like it's a when you really think about branding, you're creating a look and a feel of a product, and like an emotional and a story, and like that's really cool. The whole psychological, you know, people will pay eighty five dollars for a, a polo shirt with a little a tiny embroidery little polo logo, or seven dollars for that same shirt with nothing. Like. That whole psychology about behind that, I find really fascinating. Yeah, that's incredible. Like Oakley glasses or what? I mean, you can pick any of yeah, them. That it's right. <laughs> it's crazy. So no, but I think you guys have done that, and it's that's where you stepped up and you did something a little different, a little bit better quality from what I've been able to see on the from the well, and it helps, right? You you have a good quality product is in a nicer hoodie, but then you also have the photography to really make it pop online. So that's pretty. That's pretty cool. Totally. And, you know, you mentioned the jab, 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 right hook. So, uh, you know, how do we bring value? So when we're ready to ask, you know, for the sale, like here's a new hoodie. So how we have that set up is his photography, you know, 
you want to talk about that, letting people use it? Yeah, we do. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. obviously a lot of um, people are super familiar with the photography world in general, but I mean, yeah, that's, it's definitely, it's not cheap and it's, it's a lot of times not free for those photos. People use the photo here and there and for this and that. Um, so we've really strategically, you know, let certain people, um, say use the photos for, for different okay. things and kind of incorporate it all into one. So we're, we're giving out certain content and things like that for very, very low cost or free. And then when right. we do have say a new t-shirt design or a hoodie or something come up, it's, it's that right hook. That's like, here you go, buy it. Sure. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's given that, that value. So I, like I posted just a little bit ago, we have a no prep coming up here in Colorado. So I posted the photo you guys took of my car. <clears throat> um, as like post your picture of the car you're going to bring or whatever. So I did that like on the way here to uh, start this live feed and you have, it's real subtle, but it says uh, street car like across the whole thing, but real subtle. So you, people can still use it, but the branding's there. Right. right. Exactly. And then if they want to pay for it, we'll knock that off. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yep. So, so yeah. what does that look like? What, what's kind of the cost in photos or what do you, you guys print them all right there or what's kind of. Uh, it's a, so we have a, like on, on our website, it's, there's a tab that's a photography tab and it's, it's really a, a second website essentially, but it's, it's integrated within our, our home streetcar.com website that you would never know it. So those are all printed uh, third party, but it's a professional lab that does all the okay. printing. And it's really just like, I mean, the, the process is just like buying something on Amazon. You find, find your event and find the picture you want and yeah, it's from there. It's just like buying anything else online. And it's drop shipped right to you. So yeah, yep. Yeah, that's that's really cool. So how big how big can they print? Uh, I think the biggest that's on there is like thirty by forty eight. Wow. Thirty. So that's so like a banner deal or what? Like or is that big. like a legit photo? Yeah, yeah, and we can. I I guess for like banners, I've never I haven't looked into anything like that. Kind of like the banner that's behind you and like our street right. banner, but like a photo. Um, I know there are places that do that. I haven't looked into that yet, but uh, I know that there are several people that do do that with their like teams, especially kind of the bigger teams. They'll make a big banner of their car with some kind of extra Photoshop design integrated with it. So that, that definitely may be a, a market that we should look at next. And it can be done on canvas. It's pretty cool. Different yeah, mediums there's different. Yeah, there's, of course, just regular like photo paper. There's canvas, um, actually metal right. print which is a really, really oh. thick sheet metal. That's, that is my favorite type of print by far. Super clean and crisp. Yeah. Oh, that'd right. be pretty cool. I'd have to check one of them out. I haven't, haven't really seen that. So, or maybe I haven't, I just haven't noticed it was on metal, I guess. Yeah. When, uh, when are you guys be coming to Topeka slash Manhattan eighth mile? Topeka um, Manhattan eighth mile, which, like what? Harlan Park, or what's the, what's the Manhattan? Is there a Manhattan Eighth Mile? Wait, is that okay? I don't think so. What what track is that, Taylor? Let's see what comes up. <laughs> on this episode of MTV Cribs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. We usually hit up Topeka for streetcar takeover. Um, they're also doing that no prep nationals this year, really stepping up huge in the no prep game for the first time. I'm definitely looking forward to that one. I'm surprised Larry Larson got that done, you know, with uh, the NHRA sanctioning. Is he part of putting that on? Is he? I believe he's uh, the promoter of it, or at least, oh, actually, I think he consulted on yeah, the Yeah, he has a big part of it in it for sure. That's cool. Larry's a really cool guy. I uh, hung out with him a little bit at PRI and stuff. So yeah. he's uh, the deal he did with extending the bed truck to fit the street outlaw <laughs> rules. That's exactly. Yes. Uh, yeah. You got to bend the rules or make them however you are. If they're going to, that's, I mean, that's part of racing, right? It's figuring out how to make it work. So he's definitely one of the guys that will figure out a way to make it work. Um, what, what do you guys think about the show? You guys follow the show? Um, so what street outlaws? Yeah. I I mean, it to me, it's entertainment. I can decipher the difference. You know, sure. I can see where there's a you know a discrepancy on 
real, you know, whatever. I look at it for what it is. It's, it's entertaining. It's racing on television, which I'm stoked about. Um, I know some of the people or, you know, I'm a, kind of a part of the scene. The only thing that's really toxic for the show is Facebook, you know, the day after it airs. Sure. Right. Yeah. What do you think about it? Yeah, I, I would definitely agree. A lot of people go crazy on social media with rumors and just tons of stuff like that, which is good and bad. It's brought tons of new people to the sport, but some of those people aren't necessarily the best people to be involved with the sport. So it's, it's definitely good and bad. You got to take them both. I, I think it's no doubt help more than hurt. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And there's no, I, the whole no prep thing and all that would not be even close to what it is. And that's some of it. You need the, the guys' names there. You need the big names. You need the, the little show. Cause I've, you hear where people first time they've ever been to a drag strips to go see the people they saw on TV it has oh, not sure. a lot to do with the racing itself, but that's at least getting people to the track to, hopefully help grow the sport of drag racing and all of that, which is really cool. So Taylor was saying uh, Midwest Raceway. It's Midwest. I've never been there, but we'll have to check it out. I mean, Manhattan's not that far away. So. Yeah. So yeah, I got two tracks within like two and a half hours and that's, that's it. I guess I got one that's up North. It's a, I think it was actually an old, airstrip at, or something it's like right at the end of town um but i haven't ever been there and then there's another one on the other side of colorado but i haven't been there either you guys got a ton of tracks which a little envious of that that's that's sweet i wish i was around more more tracks but at least everybody's kind of jumping on the bandwagon of putting on the more concurrent events it's just not uh bracket racing at every track they're all kind of jumping on the bandwagon and doing that deal and if it's helping these little track owners like i'm all for it you know I mean, that's, that's a tough business, especially out here with the weather. And you know, I know um, uh, Kansas International Dragway had a tough season with a bunch of rainouts. Like, whatever makes the whole uh, – whatever makes the industry thrive, I'm for it, you know. Yeah, that's it, just doing good in it, right? And, I mean, you guys are a big part of helping that grow, whether you're posting out stuff, even though you're – uh, your product or it's the photos or whatever. It's just letting people know that stuff's going on, which is really, really pretty cool. Yeah, that's fine. We like to say if it's for the culture, we're about it, you know? Yeah. Right. And that's, yeah. We're there. Heck yeah. So that's, that's cool guys. I appreciate you guys doing this again. If, uh, if any of you guys don't know who uh, Cameron and Cameron is, it's a uh, street, uh, street car. And, uh, their page and their Instagram and all that. Go check it out. Support them what you can. Um, follow along. I mean, the photos are unreal. They, they and I don't take them, so I can say that. Right. Uh, right. One thing I did do for the listeners: uh, use the code Build Tune Race on our website. Fifteen um, percent off, and I will put some extras in the box, whether it's our new big lighters or some stickers or a beanie or whatever. Just Right on, man. That's cool. All okay, all one word. I'll, I'll make a post too. Um, and link everybody to the site and everything else. So that's awesome, guys. I appreciate that. And I appreciate everybody listening. Um, I was telling the guys before we got started, it's kind of a hard deal. I, we planned it. And then I realized that uh, uh, there's a couple other live feeds or the show going on tonight because they change nights and all that. But uh, I guess you got you to gotta try it and you got to push it and do whatever you do. So I appreciate everybody spending their Wednesday evening with us here uh, chatting about cars. So what else you guys got? What other, what other events? Uh, let's get some comments, questions. And if there's anything else you guys want to talk about or anything else you guys have seen in the, in the industry or whatever, I mean, that's what we're here to do. So do you, have you guys been to PRI or like SEMA or any of that stuff? No. no. And I was really close uh, from going this past, this uh, was in December. Um, super close. I was talking with uh, a couple people. We were going to link up and go. Um, I got credentialed. I just didn't end up going. Uh, did you go? How was that? Yeah, it was good. So uh, second year I went and I went out there and I kind of did a vlog and I posted that on YouTube and stuff. Uh, that was kind of my thing. And then I took a bunch of pictures and did the, the did the watermark and kind of shared some of that. Um, kind of the craziest thing while I was there is I literally 
didn't take a picture with my good camera. I grabbed my phone. I took three quick pictures of Reaper's new, uh, new combo, uh, posted it to my page, and then he shared my post instead of making his own post. And then I got like 50 some shares out of that and a bunch of people driven to the site and all that over not even That's using awesome. the, the fancy stuff or whatever. So it's kind of funny, like talking about going viral or all that. It's never the stuff it seems like you think will do it, but, um, right. or the, the picture that'll get the most likes or whatever. So it was cool. Um, times, what's that? Sorry about that. A lot of times our little, like just iPhone videos will blow up like huge and it's all, it's just an iPhone video. It's yeah, it's crazy how that works. Sometimes it's not so yeah, much the execution. It's how it's the time it's done. And you know, a quick iPhone photo can go if it's at the right time and it's, you know, new, you know, rather than waiting till the end of the night, going process, post-processing the photos and getting it up. I mean, there's a time and a place for that stuff, but sometimes a quick iPhone snap when it's the first, like that picture of Larry Larson's truck we shared, you know, I think uh, Chris, right. Askew took that picture and that thing went crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's, what's insane. So I guess that's where the, if you have the one picture, the one you just post it all and hope that everybody enjoys it, I guess it, so there might be some, some little things in there you might not like, or it might, be, or it might not be perfect, but Hey, you're posting it out there and you're trying to get, uh, just letting everybody know what you're seeing. So that's really cool. So um, also at PRI, have you ever been to it? No, I've been to SEMA. So yeah, I've never been to SEMA, so I can't can't really compare the two. But uh, really cool deal. Of course, it's all the racers, and you get the street outlaw deal, and you get everybody lining up for autographs or whatever. That's what the people are into. But um, then they have like a machining row, like literally they're machining blocks as you're walking by. So that's that's incredible to see, and um, just being kind of in that atmosphere. Every big name person, kind of the racing industry, is there, um, walking along by side, checking out cars, doing whatever. So that's that's kind of cool. Um, but it's the parts that you don't see is what I really enjoy, like uh, Sadiv transmissions, like what's in the Hoonigan car. Like you don't know where to go check that out or get information, but you can literally walk right up to them there and see it, like look at it, touch it, talk to them about it, get information on it, whether that's a transmission for your drag car or turbos or uh, like precision this year, they had a, I guess it's a snowmobile, maybe like a land speed. It was super low, all carbon, had a big precision turbo right in the front of the snowmobile. And isn't, I was like, ah, what the heck is that thing? And then seeing stuff like that's pretty cool because you see some different things. Um, like kind of what my thought is right now is next year at PRI, do I pack up my little deal and do I try to walk into everybody's booth and anybody that wants to talk about their product, do I let them, give them that 45 minutes of talk and whatever. And if they want to talk about their company, cool. And I, I'm good with that. And then I get to meet people and be a part of that whole deal. So that's kind of, that's what I thought about. Um, this year was taking photos and vlogging. And I had this big thing of, I'll walk up and I'll do some interviews and I'll post out the interviews. And there's a bunch of people doing that. And I, I don't know, I first day I didn't even feel like talking in the vlog. So I just took a bunch of pictures and little video. And I was like, I was like, crap, I need a, I need to step up and make right. some content here. So it's just getting out of my, getting out of the comfort zone of it. But uh, so I, two weeks out, I looked it up, flight out of Denver to there, uh, $31, $37 back. So uh, round trip for myself and my girlfriend was under $300. Um, so extremely cheap. Wow. Yeah. Trip. Uh, <laughs> it's Indy. So it's not a lot of people going there in the middle of November or whatever. So, um, it's a pretty cheap event, I think, to get to and to go be a part of. Uh, the hotel, if you stay right there at it, is pretty expensive like anything. I stayed uh, I stayed out by the airport. So anybody get, looking to go do that or whatever, it's not the best hotel, but it's <laughs> cheap. And, and that's what I was on the budget thing of getting out there. And I, I mean, I'd do it again just to be a part of the, a part of the atmosphere. I went for two days, um, both days. So literally... You can walk about half the show in one day and then half the show in the other day. Like literally, if you really stop and look, um, I was on the moose. I was able to cover it all in one day, but then I went back and hit all the big stuff the second day. Uh, but that's how big it is. It's pretty cool. And then there's a lot of seminars uh, like Drag Illustrated 30 under 30 and they do all that stuff. So I was like, oh, that's cool. But I didn't get to go watch it. Um, right. So next year, I'd like to be there, there was a guy talking about social media in the automotive. I don't yeah, know the guy's name. 
I would like to go, I mean, I look at events like that as kind of like a Rolodex builder, you know, go out there, shake hands, meet some cool right. people, you know, future collaborations, that whole deal. Um, and I did, I looked at some of those uh, seminars or lectures or whatever. Yeah. There's some cool stuff. Super cool stuff. Thank you. So that's what uh, Corey Campbell is saying. Come out to PMP in Pueblo, Colorado. So I'm literally 15 minutes from that track. That's kind of my own thing. But if you guys are ever coming out for, uh, uh, I'll, I'll be putting on a no prep deal, Thin Air Mayhem uh, in July. I'll throw that out there. But uh, if you guys come out and there's any way I can help or do whatever, or if you guys are ever in the area and you guys ever need anything, you let me know. I'm I'm more than helpful to uh, try to get you into anything that I can, or if you guys need a place to stay, you're more than welcome. I got a extra room, so I'll just throw that out. Um, awesome. good, good people in the car thing, so if I can ever help, let me know for sure. Likewise, for any Kansas City stuff, uh, you know, definitely have a, the hospitality is already set up. No, I appreciate I it. To Colorado. I love Colorado personally. Yeah. Same, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know like uh, Jared, Sketchy Vert, um, and Kyle and all those guys, they seem to travel out to 1320 guys seem to love to come to Colorado and they're out here quite a bit um, hanging out and stuff. The airstrip attack. Um, I want to go to Pikes Peak, uh, which obviously isn't drag racing related, but yeah. that's a cool weekend. Yeah, that's on my bucket list 100%. To, to show. I want to, of course, be, being a photographer, I have tons of events like that that I want to shoot. Oh, true. Heck yeah, just to get the pictures from it. Yeah, that's probably kind of how you look at some of the photography too, right? Like that's that's your history. That's what you've been and done. And yeah, yeah so I'm I'm 45 minutes from Pikes Peak ish, maybe an hour, and I haven't been to the race. But one thing that's really weird about Colorado is there's like five major events that happen that same same weekend, uh, which is crazy that they all chose that that's the weekend they're going to throw throw all the events. So it kind of sucks. You got to pick and choose where you're going or what you're doing. Hmm. Saw so somebody ask if you guys uh, plan on covering anything like Drag Week, um, which I know it's out in like Georgia this year. Is um, it? Yeah, I would it's like clear to. back east. Um, one of my one of the local guys here is building a, a Nova. It's at Larson Shop right now. Um, Dylan Gocher, and uh, he invited uh, us out this this upcoming year. So I don't know if we can make that work. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Heck yeah. So, and then I don't know if you guys have heard of uh, Matt was my very first podcast. He owns the Hawk. He's bat some of the no prep stuff here recently. Uh, real pretty Nova. I'm sure you guys have gotten pictures of it. Uh, the Hawk Nova? The Hawk Nova. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So he was my first uh, live deal. And then he went to Tucson and went rounds and ended up losing the car or whatever. And then he's been to uh, down to San Antonio. And then I think he's got the invite to go back East even further for the next one or whatever. So he, puts on Rocky Mountain Race Week, which is a similar deal to Drag Week, but it's actually going to be, um, so that's what I saw you building the little RX2 for is kind of that event. It's going to be the week of June, I think it starts June 16th and goes to like the 22nd, if I'm not mistaken, and it's going to go from Great Bend, Kansas, Topeka, uh, Mocan, Noble, Oklahoma, and then back to Great Bend, I guess, I think is the route. So that's yeah. kind of right there, right there in your guys' area. Kyle covers it with 1320 and stuff too, but uh, that's a lot of. Yeah, he does a great job with, and he's getting up that those videos same day. He has an on-site yeah, or whatever. So I would like, if we do it, I would like to do it and focus on a car and more do like a mini documentary on. Yeah, that'd be cool. You know, like a, I talked to my buddy Dylan, so. That would be cool, you know, kind of the trials and tribulations of the week, the hell the hell of a week, you know. Right, and that's what, that was kind of my idea with building this RX2 and going and doing that is I'd vlog the build, vlog, um, the going to, racing the whole event, and then finishing right. it up or whatever. Just just because it is, it's a it's the next level type thing with all the cars driving and people hanging out. But, like, with it local, if you guys haven't experienced it, um, about five minutes away, that's a host hotel. And you see all these cars parked in the hotel and everybody's out hanging out afterwards or working or wrenching or doing whatever. And that, that kind of atmosphere is super cool uh, yeah. with what you guys are talking about. And then you get a lot of cool content of people just enjoying car things, I guess. So that's a really cool deal. So we'll keep in touch more on that. If you guys end up being sure. a part of that deal too, that'd be cool. For sure. Darcy says Rocky Mountain Race Week over Drag Week. I've heard that a lot. 
personally. Definitely. Yeah, so uh, I'm partial to it because I've been around it. So the difference, I guess, Matt does, uh, it, it's a seven-day deal. So there's the two long drives. He gives you an extra day to get there. It's not such a crunch, so people can enjoy it, or if you want to pull off the road or do whatever um, you get to. So, or just in, and that's why I was building the car. The car I'm building, like my other car, is faster. I could probably do the trip, but um, I want to be able to go enjoy it. I want to go hang out. It's a four door car. I want to throw people in the back and go do trailer burnouts and just have fun, yeah. not not be so stressed. But my luck, it'll probably be. The opposite, and it'll be the simplest build, but it'll have issues or something. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't do a trailer burnout on Drag Week or Rocket Mountain Race Week, you didn't really go. <laughs> yeah, like the car doesn't even need a trailer, I don't think. But I think I just want to put a cooler and chairs, so then they yeah. do trailer burnout. So, <laughs> <laughs> I definitely think those events are perfect for the if you're into trying to uh, you know make create content. The, those events are rich of content opportunities for sure. Absolutely. I think it would be cool if you did one of these, like at each stop with like five pre-set up guests, you know, that'd be pretty cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that, that's kind of, that's what I was thinking too with it. Right. Is I mean, you get somewhere and you say, Hey, let's, let's throw the live feed on and you just chat about how the day went or whatever. I mean, um, I've been fortunate enough that, uh, I know some of the racers that have done it or when they broke or whatever and all the, how they get it fixed or what they're doing to make it happen or all that. And it's, it's, it's crazy. The community that comes together um, to run people parts or all of that. So just to be able to document that side of it's cool. Cause like Kyle and them do a great job at, at it, but there's so much of it. It's, right. it's crazy. Um, the, the first year they did it, they actually had some cameras, but I'm not sure exactly. I guess some of those videos are out there. Uh, where they kind of picked racers um, to follow, but and they were in just a little regular car and followed them, but um, that didn't happen last year, I know. So that would be cool if you guys could do something like that. That'd be that'd be pretty sweet. Kind of spotlight a certain person or whatever. Uh, <laughs> Darcy says, assuming I'd be too busy uh, trying to zip tie my car back together, there's a lot of just barely holding it together, trying to finish it out. Um, <laughs> I'm excited to see Darcy's car come out this year. So, so Darcy, what what's your plans? What are you doing? What's uh, <laughs> what's the plans? Or is is that all top secret stuff? I don't think every, so. Every time she posts a picture, it's all the motors usually blacked out. So, <laughs> <laughs> you just got a Subaru engine. In there. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> it's like every time they do an interview with Beater Bomb, it's got uh, a two J or. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. Right on. Well, guys, I mean, if there's anything else you want to talk about, or I mean, this is the time to throw it out there. I just really appreciate the opportunity. I think we were pretty stoked to do this. It's our first time yeah. uh, being on a podcast, and hopefully we uh, brought some value to everybody listening. Yeah, that's it. I mean, like you said, and I, there is enough space for everyone. Um, it's just doing the right things at the right time for everybody in the industry. And if it all grows together, that's where everybody wins. So I think it's an exciting time for this style of, uh, you know, whatever we're all doing, it's exciting. There's tons of opportunity. And um, I know for 2018, I'm working on a couple of collaborations. So that will be cool. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Heck yeah. No, I'll be watching. That's what I've, I've wanted to talk to you guys and get with you. And then I was like, ah, I'll hit those guys up. And then I know you guys are technically inclined with some of the stuff you do. So I was like, well, if I have any technical issues with this whole life, you deal, at least hopefully they can help me, help me figure it out. Cause we had a little bit of a deal with the camera at the beginning and all that. So I was like, somebody else I've been like, ah, I don't know what to do. Yeah. So <laughs> figured it out real quick. <laughs> yeah. But thanks man. Cool, um, heck yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll tag it up. Uh, anybody else that hasn't, Make sure you visit the page, like their page, do whatever you can. Um, I'm sure I'll have you guys back on at some point. Maybe if uh, you guys cover a big event or you got some cool info, let me know and we'll get on this thing and we'll chat about what you guys are up to. Awesome. One more time, build, tune, race. That's the promo code. 15% yeah. off everything and we'll throw in a bunch of free stuff. Heck yeah, guys. I appreciate that more than anything. I appreciate everybody watching. So uh, thank you. Thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. All right. Hey, Riley, we'll take some food from Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. See you.